also the transport directory, the gear trans, and the subfolder that we have. We will also see about the transport request files, the transport logs, each transport phase, and the logs of the phases. We will talk about the transport groups and the relation with the transport directory, gear trans. We will see some information about the transport job, uh, the transport tools version, and we will talk about the TMS ADM user. Starting with uh, checking the transport tools tab. In STMS, the first thing that we can do to check if everything is all right with the STMS is to do a check in the transport tools tab. With this check, it will be checked everything that is important to the transport to work. If one of these checks is not green, then the transport will not work, uh, like the export or the import will not work. So this is the first thing that we need to do. And if something is not green here, then we need to check in details what is the problem. Like if it is the TP that's not connecting with the database, we need to check and work on this before uh, proceed with some imports. Also here it is do, it, it does some check in the um, RFC that calls the TP, so this is really important. Okay, and now about the transport directory, the gear trans, and all the subfolders that we have. Uh, the gear trans is a SAP profile that points to the, the, the path of the transport directory. Like for Unix we have a U, USR SAP trans, and for Windows to have it with the host name. Um, G, 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 the G trans have, has uh, some subfolders in the transport directory. Like the, the configuration of the profile, it is available in the bin subfolder. The buffer where we have all the transports in the queue is located in the buffer directory. The data of the transport, the transport requests uh, stay in the data directory as, a, as the co-file, which has the information about the, the import process. We have the log directory, we have the TMP, and also have the EPS directory for the support packages. Uh, regarding the transport request files, uh, each transport request has two files. One is the data, it has the exported objects extracted from the source system. Like when, like a support package or a transport request, it has the, the data file which contains all the objects that were exported from the, the system. Uh, it is named R9, then we have five digits, and then the source SCID of the system. And it is located in the DirTrans data directory. And also we have the co-file. This co-file contains information about the control on how to import and process the request. Uh, it is named CHI-9, five digits, and then the stars SAD of the system. And then it is located in your trans co-file. Um, a good test to do to check if the request file is not corrupted is to run an R3 minus L in the data file of the request. And then if it finishes with zero, then we know there is no problem with the transport request. Now the transport logs. The transport logs are created in the log subfolder or in the TMP when the, the step is running. Like when we have a phase that is running, the file is being updated in the TMP, TMP folder. Um, some important logs that we have is the U log, that this log lists all the TP commands. So if you want to investigate some TP that was imported, for example, we can check here. It will list all the TP commands that were executed for that system. So an example is a TP import, uh, a single TP import in a transport request. We can see the time when it was executed, so this log is very important. And also the A log that we have, this log lists all the finished transport steps. So every time that a transport phase finish, we can see here we have the transport number, 
Then we have the system, the clients, and we have the, the digit that corresponding to the transport phase. We will see some more information about this digit in a few minutes. And we also have some information about the users. This log is important for us to check some important times for the requests. And we have also the S log that is uh, that lists some more general information about the imports. Now, regarding each transport log that we have, uh, start with the transport dependent steps. For example, we have the main import phase, and then it is with I. The, the, the phase step is I. So we have the source system where the, the transport request was created, and then we have a number, and we have the SAD of the, the import system where the import is happening. In this example, we have a transport request that, that was created in the CTD system, and it is, this log is from the import on the system CTR. So we have the source system, the phase step, we have the number, and then we have the import system. We also have some transport independent steps, like, for example, this one, the distribution step, some some information regarding the dictionary import, and it has the E step, then we have the date, and then we have the import SAD of the system. Okay. Now, here we can see some more information about the transport phases and the logs that we have. For example, the first one is the export log. And then we can see which is the tool or the job or even the program that is responsible for the execution of this phase. The export of a transport is done by the R3 trends. When we have the, also the dictionary import that is done also by the R3 trends, we have the dictionary activation that is done by a job, a specific job for this step, and the distribution. It is also done by a, a job. We have the structured conversion, also done by a job. The movement tabs is done by a program. Now the main part, it is done also by the R2 trends. And then we have some other imports like the activation of the queue definitions done by a job. And the ADO import, it's also job. The version management is done by this job. The expert execution, it's triggered by the, this job. And finally, you have the generation of about problems and the screens that is done by this job. So it, this information is important for us when we want to see if there is a, pro, a problem with one phase. Then we know if you need to check if the R2 trans is having a problem or if you have a job that is having a problem. If we, we know what is the job or the problem, or even if it is our tutor that, that is executing these steps, it's better for us to know. It's better for us to find what is the problem. Go into the next phase. Now we have some important information about the transport groups in the transport directory. All the systems sharing the same transport directory must be assigned to the same transport group. In this example here, we also have the systems CTD and CTR again. And if you check the, the screen, the CTD is located in group CTD, and CTR is located in the group CTR. So they have different transport groups it means they must have also different transport directories. And if it, they are sharing the same transport directory, then the transports will not work. We will have some problems. So it's important that they, they have different transport directory because they have different transport groups. If they have the same transport group, they, they, they must be in the same directory. In this example, they have different transport groups. So 
we need to make sure they have different new trends. In this example, we are checking in AR11 each system. So when connected on CTD, uh, we open the TMP folder uh, inside the trends and we compare uh, the content of the file of the director to make sure they have different content. So if they have different content, we can confirm they they are in different gear trends because like in Unix we cannot see exactly what is the the host name of the of the, the system. So doing this way we can confirm that they have different directories and we are good because they are in different transport groups. Now when they have different transport groups and different gear trends so they, they, the, the queue of the import system must be adjusted before the, the import is going to happen. Like they, they, there is a button here, it is the adjust queue, and it, it must be executed before the import. In this moment, the transport request files, the dot and the call file, is, are going to be transferred between one dear trans to another. Like, for example, CTD, which is our development system, has a different transport directory. So before the import happens in CTR, the transport, directory, uh, transport requests files must be transferred. So we have this, this button here to do the transfer. And after adjusting the queue, the request will be read to be imported. This is a manual way to do it. Uh, because we have a job that can be scheduled, and then this job can run program RS, TMS, TIQ, and we can schedule this job to run, and it will automatically adjust the queue for you. And you don't need to worry about the adjusting of the queue. Of course, this is only necessary if you have different transport directories and transport groups. Now, something really important regarding the transport is this job, RDD in DP. This background job is used for the communication between the DP and the SAP system. It must be scheduling all clients with user DDIC using this report called RDD new PP. Uh, this job is when the transport starts, when the PP is triggered, is this job is, must be scheduled in all clients, and one way of checking it is running SM37 and check this job. Just like in the screenshot, we select the schedule release, red, active, with no dates, and then we can see if the, it is scheduled there. Just like this, it's, it's good to know if the, if, the, if the job is scheduled or not. But it's important to schedule this job with the, our our program with the RDD new PP, then it will be scheduled the way it is to, it is the correct way. Uh, some information about the, the TP and this job is that TP calls the operating system to SAP EVT, and then this tool sends the event SAP trigger RDD in DP to SAP system, and then this job will start in processing the transport. This job will know which phase of transport must be executed. If there was left behind or, uh, or something else, the, this job will know and will execute the correct phase of the transport after the TP calls it. So this, this job is really important and if it is not correctly scheduled, the transports will not work. And for this job to work correctly, there are some important parameters def defined in the default profile, like the one that has the host information, the SAD information, and also the SAP system number. Uh, and in STMS transport tool tab, we have the system PS that tells this, par this parameter has information about the default profile, and it tells SAP EVT where to look for the default profile. And then the job will know the, the information about the host and everything, and the transport will work. Yeah. 
Something that is really important for the transport to work is the transport tools version. Because the P is responsible for starting the transports and then depending on the phase, the arteries trans that will be executed. So these tools are updated um, when there is some new information like a, when there is some, some important information like uh, when we have some improvement on the transports, the TP and the arterial trans are updated, so it's good to have the, the latest version. And we can run a TP minus V or arterial trans minus V to get information about the compile time, and then we know if it is updated or not. And our recommendation is to have them updated. Now, regarding the TMS ADM user, um, when we do the, uh, the configuration of STMS, this user is, creation, is created. And the communication between the SAP systems is implemented using RFCs connections. And they are generated when we start the first time STMS. The user TMS ADM is created in client, client 000, and it must only have the standard profile. And it's not good to add more uh, profiles to it because there will be security problems. And when we have the transport domain, all the SAP systems can, can communicate with each other using the RFCs. For each SAP system, two RFCs connections are used. The first one is the TMS ADM, and then the SAD and the transport domain name, and TMS SUP is the, the other one, RFC. And to prevent unpermitted access to an SAP system, the two generator RFCs connection are used. The first one, the TMS ADM, is used for all read access that do not affect sensitive data. Like, for example, to read the transport queue or write for the common transport directory. Um, but the, the other RFC TMS suit is used for access that cause change in the target system. In the target system, the user trigger the import must have the appropriate authorizations, and then it's not used the TMS ADM. Um, the TMS ADM user is when you have a problem, if you have a large number of SCP systems to manage, and you, you you wish to avoid the logo on screen, you can activate the TMS Trusted Service. And then we have a note there that explains about it. And if you are getting a logo screen for no critical change, like refreshing the import queue, then we have a problem with the TMS ADM password. Because these simple reads of the queue does not require any uh, extra authorization. So the user TMS ADM with the standard profile must do it. And if you are getting a logo screen, it means that we have some problem with the password. And for this, we have the, the report that is called TMS, update password of TMS ADM, to solve this kind of problems. And this, this report must be executed in client 000 of the, the domain controller. And it will update all the password of TMS ADM in the whole domain. It will make the user have the same password in all systems. So no problem of logo screen and other things with the TMS ADM. And to do some troubleshooting on the STMS, and if you have some transport problems, these notes listed here so are important notes to check what is happening with the transports. Uh, the first one uh, lists basically all this information that I just showed, like check the job, do trends, TP and R3 versions. And the other one talks about the adjust of the queue and we have different transport directory. This note about uh, to avoid logon prompt when importing in, to a foreign system is really important. It brings information about STMS, ADM user, just like I, I informed 